that's the hard thing after you lose somebody. Your life just changes irrevocably. There is some joy that I feel like I don't smile with my eyes anymore. I look at that picture and I'm smiling with my eyes. Zoe was four when Ailey was born, so she was actually a really good help. Zoe always looked out for her. Yeah. And Ailey was fascinated by her big sister. In the bath when they were little, we used to have those foam stick up letters that you could put inside the bath. And I'm convinced that the reason Ailey read so early and so well is because Zoe used to play teacher with her. They, they had a really nice relationship. Stuart's oldest brother lives in France. We went pretty much every year yeah, from the time Zoe was born. The first couple of days of the holiday, pretty laid back. Ailey was always big on a slidey door rental car. Yeah, by chance that's what it was. On the Wednesday, we went to Cognac for the day. And she liked that because it had a little train thing that took us around. Yeah. We got served the macaron. The wee macaron with the, the tasting thing. Yeah. yeah, she liked that. When I was looking back at photos, we first could see she just wasn't quite right. And we had decided we'd just have quite a low-key day after being in Bordeaux and all the heat the day before. Stuart had gone out and gotten pain au chocolat. And yeah, and we sat, we sat, we sat all starting and ate breakfast. Yep, and she ate tons. Yep. She played cards. She beat yep. you at Uno, yep. which she loved to do. You got the French equivalent of Gatorade. She started to drink that and then she came straight back up. Threw up. At that point, we thought, this isn't right. Uh, let's go to the hospital. They triaged her within 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, I mean, we really, didn't have to Really wait. quickly. And the consultant who was on duty, one of the first things he did, she was laying down and he tested her neck to see if she could catch it. And she passed that test. So they weren't quite sure because she had obviously passed the initial screen that they were looking for for meningitis. I had texted you at that point and said, yeah. she's, she's yeah. sleeping there kind of, we don't know what's going on. And then Ailey woke up shortly after that and said she needed the lube, but she was hooked up to the paracetamol drip. So I said, okay, let me go get a nurse who can put this on a piggyback that we can leave the room. The nurse came in, she got the drip on a piggyback. We got Ailey up and it's like, she didn't even remember asking to go to the lube. That was the first point I really looked at her and she was completely disoriented, completely. I went to get her up and she slid off the bed and I was standing here and she just almost crumpled and I caught her. And as luck would have it, the A&E consultant was walking by right at that point and looked in yeah. the door and he came in and he put her back on the bed and he tested her neck again and he, she failed it. And he looked at me and he said, je pense meningite. And I said, meningitis. And he said, we, oui. and then everything just started happening really quick yeah. at that point. Yeah. They were expecting us and took us up to the pediatric intensive care. And she was in a hospital bed on life support and intubated. And the nurse took sure. us into a room and we sat down and there were tissues on the table and it was just... Stark realization. Ah, oh, this is not good. And, and I think the consultant was pretty much of the opinion that she was gone. They took her for her second CT scan about 11 or 12, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then when the results of that came back, she was declared brain dead. It sounds really bizarre to say it was a gift, but I think it was a gift to be able to be there and be with her at the very end before they took yeah. her in for surgery. The thing that's the saddest to me, though, is thinking about what Ailey might have grown into. It's always extraordinary, and I think Ailey would have been extraordinary as well in a different way. We were asked if we wanted to donate her organs. And, and Zoe's initial reaction was, I don't want to give any part of her away. And we remember we had we sat and had the conversation. Yeah. Let's think about Ailey. Out of everybody in our family, Ailey shared better than anybody. You know, if Ailey had a chocolate bar and said, Do you want some? She'd break it in half. And if it wasn't an equal thing, she'd give you the bigger half where all the rest of us would be like, it's your small corner of my chocolate bar kind of thing. And I said to Zoe, I said, do you think Ailey would want to share her organs? And Zoe said, 
Yes, yeah, she would. Yeah. I found meningitis now really supportive yeah. and nice and reached out a hand. I would say it's almost like having a friend walking with you. We had tons of support in the community here. I mean, amazing support. Incredible. But most people, I don't think, appreciate how it just drops in out of the blue and destroys your life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but meningitis now did do. Um, and that, I think that was really helpful. Nice. Just to feel like someone understood exactly what we were going through. So I set up a forever fund page for Ailey soon after she died. You lose a child and you feel like you can't speak about them and you don't have all of their milestones to talk about. But it's quite nice having the fundraising page and see people remember her. Um, there may not always be big amounts, but the fact people have taken the time to remember her and do anything is just lovely. Yeah. Please support Meningitis Now's Christmas Ribbon Appeal in memory of all of those who have been lost to meningitis so that Meningitis Now can continue to help support those who have been impacted.